I'll show you around my um, my workshop. Um, just give you a rundown of all, some of the equipment I have. Um, I'll start here. This is obviously just a Technics um, SUV 505 amplifier. Um, I use for a pair of um, old Beavox S45 loudspeakers as my test amplifier. This is a uh, Ballantine time and amplitude test set um, that was scrapped at work. I don't really use it that much and it's actually taking up unnecessary space but it's it has a very accurate um, generator in it, crystal generator, so it's quite useful for setting and checking calibrations of uh, scopes and things like that. But to be honest with you, it's not one of the most important bits of equipment in the workshop. Um, this is an old advance um, signal generator, AM FM signal generator. You can pick these up very cheaply on eBay. Valve operated. Um, it's designed to uh, calibrate the IF stages of the basic uh, of an FM radio. Um, it doesn't cater for the AM frequencies. Um, the low the lowest frequency it will do is four megahertz, all the way up to two hundred thirty megahertz. Um, Scale's fairly accurate, but it's not particularly um, reliable, and you need to use a signal generator one. It does it does line deviation, so you can sweep the signal. Um, you can see uh, the X phase adjustment and things that uh, that's for altering the phase of the when you're using the X and Y amplifier on the uh, oscilloscope for uh, discriminators and things like that. This is another advanced signal generator. Uh, this is actually quite a nice generator actually, it's extremely stable, um, it's another valve operated uh, generator. I paid £15 for these, these are really, so they're giving these away, people don't want them anymore. Um, it does um, AM only, um, but um, that was one of my first generators I bought in the workshop and uh, it works very well as I say and it's very stable and for £15 you know you can't really go wrong. You've got a couple of linear power supplies here, uh, made by a company called Roban Electronics. Um, it's actually the company I work for, um, hence I put my name on them so they know they're mine. Uh, this is the 32, which is a um, fully linear power supply, uh, 30 volts at 2 amps. Um, it has the option for remote sensing. They, um, this particular model is extremely low noise, um, as there's no switching switch mode uh, technology in these at all. Um, load regulation and uh, things like that are very good, um, very stable, uh, work well into reactive loads. This is a 65 which is a slightly different animal. This is, has, your, has a um, thyristor front end to keep the header volts down on the um, linear regulator. This is still a good power supply but it does generate more RF noise similar to the uh, the other ranges they did, which was the um, the 3010, which was also using a thyristor front end, very good, very very good for um, line regulation and load regulation. You can change the uh, the load considerably on the output from say sort of one to ten amps, and you'd only get a sort of uh, maybe a maximum of about 50 millivolts deviation on the output. Uh, pretty basic operation, uh, constant constant current mode or trip. So if the achieves its current limit it will either trip out and the output will totally fall off or it will just it will just hold back at peak current uh, the voltage and current adjustments um, the operation mode is quite simple it's out that's output on that's your preset output so that even though you set your voltage there and then that will switching the switch down will enable the output or if you want to set the current limit it's quite s simple on these early devices you push that up that basically puts a short circuit on the output and you adjust the peak current to what you want and then you, you're away you press the output on simple as that really uh, cheap Chinese uh, function generator nothing really to write home about never really use it to be honest with you um, this is a Raikul Dana 1998 uh, frequency counter, lovely bit of kit, very accurate, extremely high resolution, 
very useful for sort of checking the outputs of the uh, the old signal generators. Um, that's what I really use that for. Uh, another Rakel um, instrument, a 5001 uh, DVM, um, pretty accurate, um, quite good height, quite good resolution. Getting on a bit now, a bit unreliable, tends to lose its EEPROM settings. Um, another one that's scrapped from work, don't really use that, that's another meter that uh, you know, I'd rather use a fluke or something like that now, uh, but it's quite useful for just monitoring the output as you see of the uh, the rotor band power supply. Um, another uh, advanced piece of equipment that's a AF signal generator, um, good for setting tones for the uh, calibration of decks and things like that. Um, reliable, stable output, but um, not not that often used. I have been using it in the last couple of hours. This is a uh, this is the Wayne Wayne Kerr. I can hear all the sniggering in the background. Uh, component test set. Um, this is a really old clunky piece of kit. Um, it does work quite well actually. Um, it's basically an LCR meter. Um, very slow to respond. No auto ranging. You have to select everything manually with this switch here. Um, and it's not particularly reliable on its ranging selections anyway, but um, it's probably more accurate than a uh, a pocket uh, or a, like a, a, a cheap Chinese uh, DVM style component test set. Um, it's actually very good for inductors, um, but capacitors, it's a little bit flaky on some things, especially on very low value capacitors, it seems to get the tends to get the settings totally wrong and gives you false readings but on certainly on the bigger caps like sort of the anything over sort of half a microfarad to sort of 10 50, 20,000 microfarads it's absolutely fine it gives you nice reliable readings um we move on to the uh the old 54600 hp scope that's an ebay find um that works really well um they're very prone to um failure of the uh, switch contacts and also the uh, pots um, one thing you must never do on these old scopes is uh, spray anything on the front panel because if, if liquid gets into the uh, the membrane switches then you find that the uh, all the contact uh, conductivity washes off um, that's what happened with this one this was sold as a spare to repair basically I coated all the um, contacts with silver paint cleaned all, everything up and they've got it working again. The other problem with these is if you store these or you transport them around in the car, you must always put the, the front cover on them to protect them. Because if you get a, if it slides around in the back of the car and you impact one of these pots, you'll break the circuit board behind the board behind the um, front panel, um, and then you lose obviously control of well, half the half the machine. Actually, you might not. If it breaks the the track behind here, you'll probably find you lose half the um, half the front panel will be unresponsive. Uh, this is a fairly recent find of mine. This is the Marconi um, 2019, uh, sold as a spares repair. Uh, this machine was uh, crashing on startup, and that was basically, as you see on one of my previous um, videos, a replacement capacitor needed and a repair to two tracks that the capacitor had burnt through. Works very well, very stable output. The uh, Red and Schwartz SMLH. This is um this is my first decent signal generator I bought. It's um range of uh only ten kilohertz to forty megahertz, so I had to buy the, the mark only to cover the VHF band. But the beauty of the mark uh the Roland Schwartz is it has a very high output in comparison with the um Mark only it will put, actually produce about three watts RF output. Um not particularly useful in most cases, but it's um, also very nice and easy for uh, when you're sweeping FM bands and you want to do it manually. You can just wind up and down manually with the uh, the tuning capacitor. Whereas on the uh, Marconi, it's all done by digital steps up and down, which uh, is a bit clunky and it's, it doesn't give you the same sort of refinement and feedback. And that's basically about it. We've got a few sort of meters in the uh, cupboard. You've got a couple of... Uh, Oh, I've got an old American Simpson I bought just really out of trial just to see what it's like. I've got an old Tandy Micronta um, meter there. That's another cheap find. Got a, 
a component test set there which is uh, pretty awful as is that one there be below it I've got a, an isolation tester there uh, an old mega isolation tester here there were, uh, I tend to use the old mega BM uh, BM80 here BM8 sorry um, analog meter it's uh, the most useful of the two um, and it's easier to read the digital ones nice because it does a few other bits and pieces it does it has an ohms range and a continuity test but really the basic analog ones fine for what i do um i think that's basically it oh we've got an old eight um eight the cover's off at the moment but that's uh that's an avo a tmf signal generator as well um i think that basically sums up the workshop really but uh yeah i thought you might find it interesting what stuff i have and uh I'll at some point go through some of the uh, equipment I've repaired and uh, put some more videos on.